So <clears throat> I just recorded a 45 minute Q&A film and then deleted it because I kind of felt like I was being a little bit too flippant with people's questions. And it started, started to kind of make me feel like I might be coming across as somebody who thinks they have all the answers. And that was a perfect opportunity to delete the film and remind everybody, every poor unsuspecting civilian who stumbles across my YouTube channel, that uh, I am far from a person that has all the answers. In fact, I make mistakes all the time. I try tons of things that don't work and I do stupid stuff all the time. On the flip side of that, I am somebody that does have experience in a variety of different things, photography being one of them, cycling being one, motorcycling being another, all of these things that I've been doing my whole life. Uh, so yeah, I might have a little tidbit of advice here and there. The other thing that happened is that I started posting these photo fitness films and certain photographers reached out and said, hey, I really like those films. I like the concept of that film. I like this idea of photo fitness. I like the concept of you, you reiterating to people about the importance of practicing photography. These people didn't comment on YouTube. These are like working photographers that reached out and said, hey, I kind of like this thing that you're doing. That's kind of cool. Keep it up. They're fun. Fun for them to watch. And uh, I was like, yeah, you know, this, uh, this concept of practice. And it got me thinking about something. So, and I want to give you a little analogy here. So let's say that you are interested in the atomic bomb program in the United States, the history of the atomic bomb. And you say, okay, I need to learn about this. So let's say you go to the Santa Fe Public Library and you go to the regional reading room and you pick out American Prometheus, which is the biography about Oppenheimer. It's a great book. You read that book, and in that book, you're going to learn about a dozen other people that were instrumental in this process coming to be. And let's say that you find the 12 different books about each one of those individuals. And those lead to other histories and other time frames and other regions in the world and all of these things. And you start to realize just how complicated this story actually is. So then let's say that you contact the Los Alamos National Laboratories and you say, hey, look, I'm really interested in this topic. Can I talk to the PIO, the public information officer? Do you have somebody that's a bridge to the civilian world? I'd love to come to the museum. I'd love to get access to the archive. I really want to put some work in here and figure out the true history of what was happening. Let's say that's one side, one technique. The other technique is you just go to the theater and you watch Oppenheimer. And then suddenly, after watching one Hollywood feature that's three hours long, you decide that you know the history of the atomic program in America. I hear a lot of people taking that second route. People that a couple of months ago didn't know anything about Oppenheimer, didn't know anything about the bomb, didn't know anything about the history. And they go see Oppenheimer, and now they're talking as if they actually know the story. That's the difference between an amateur photographer and a professional photographer. There has to be more. And I'll give you an example. If you think you're going to go out into the world having not shot pictures every day for an extended period of time, if you think you're going to just come in cold into the field, flip a switch, and shoot five-star imagery, number one, you're delusional. Number two, chances are you don't know what five-star imagery is and your five-star imagery is probably someone else's one or two-star imagery. This is not just me speaking from personal preference or personal experience. I was an assistant for years. I assisted for advertising photographers, commercial photographers, editorial photographers. Nobody at any skill level, nobody went into the field, flipped a switch, and miraculously produced five-star imagery. Every single one of these people had to shoot themselves into shape. And to re to reemphasize this point, I ran into an editor a few months ago, and he was editing on a magazine where I was assisting for a photographer shooting for the magazine. And I mentioned a specific story, and this editor said, oh yeah, that was a problem. That was a problem. That story was a major problem. I said, why? He goes, because you didn't shoot enough. You guys weren't shooting enough. We were screaming, shoot more, shoot more, shoot more, send more film. And by the way, people, 
we're talking about assignments where you were shooting hundreds of rolls of film, hundreds of rolls of film at a time, and it wasn't enough. And what the editor was referring to was that the photographer never got out of the blocks. You have to get yourself back into shooting shape by shooting and shooting and shooting. Photography is exactly like fencing. There's a lot of dancing around, followed by moments of panic or moments of bliss. You know, it's like, oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. Oh, you got me kind of thing. That's what photography is. Nobody shows up at the Olympic fencing trials without practicing on a daily basis for years before they get to the height of their skill. So you have to set realistic expectations. If you're not in the field every day shooting, and many of you aren't because you have jobs and you're not full-time professional photographers and that's fine. You have to set realistic expectations about what you're, what's possible in the field when you finally get there. And for those of you who are trying to be working professionals, if you're spending 80% of your time marketing, 80% of your time on social media promoting work that may or may not be that good, I don't think you're ever going to make it. I think to be really good, especially at something like documentary photography, you have to be so fit because there's no second chance with reality-based photography. So I just wanted to share this stuff. And remember, 90% of what I do, you're never going to see because it sucks. I just blew focus earlier. This really weird thing happened. It was like 50 pinion jays hit a tree. I was in the perfect position. The light was amazing. And I totally blew it. Am I going to show you that stuff? No. Am I going to promote it? No. I'm just going to go inside, curl into a ball, and sob.